I'd like to call this July 28th City of Manessens Council meeting to order. Could I have a roll call, please? Council Member Chikowski? Here. Council Person Thomas? Council Minister? Present. Council McGregor? Here. Mayor Mosier? Present. Mayor, we note four members present in the absence of Council Person Thomas and also note a quorum. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask Pastor Bass to lead us in prayer. There's a microphone over here if you turn it on. Just flip the switch on. Lord, we thank you for this occasion. We thank you for this mayor and all the city council and all the city officials. We thank you for every participant. We thank you how you watched over us all last night and woke us up with a reasonable portion of health and strength. And God, how you let our golden moments roll on. We ask you now that you bless our efforts tonight, that you bless us that our business can be conducted recognizing that we are the children of God. And Lord, we bless all, and we ask you, God, that you would give us the wisdom and lead us that our meeting might be fruitful and that we are successful for the city of Manesson. Bless us now and keep us in peace and mercy and help us now, Lord, we ask in thy name. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, due to all the uh, busy things that have taken place the last couple of weeks, we do not have the uh, previous minutes of the meeting ready for approval. They will be ready the next time, um, so we'll skip that. At this time, I'd like to open the floor for public comment on agenda items only. Ernie Telegraphus. I have uh, three questions. One. The report that Cypher and Cypher is going to give us today, is that going to have a bearing on the city of Manessin getting a TAN note next year? Well, it's impossible to get a TAN note without a, a, an audit, so yeah, it'll but have I mean, some is effect. Is this going to help or what? Well, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. All right. So the other question. This... Um, Purchasing system alternatives. We got a general label there, but you're not telling us what it is. Uh, where, what, what are you, where, page where? four. Page four uh, F. And about oh, that's pricing. just a discussion, and that's the whole pur purpose of this: is to explain what it is we've been doing. There's no motion that's going to be made. There's no decision going to be made. Today. We're simply today. We're okay. just simply going to talk about it. And then one last thing. Um, these people getting together at the uh, school district, mm -hmm. who's paying for all of this? We're getting together where? Huh? Wait, be more specific. Uh, on G. It says here, uh, police force, school district, relevant responders. When they're going to get together and put out, you know, protocols and tactics, who's paying for all of this? All the respective people that are participating. So the city of Manessa? So the medicine will pay our police officers. The school will pay their, their people. Okay, we're going to have a rundown on these costs, breakdown? Um, it's part of normal policing. This is to protect our children. And I'll discuss this a little bit more. But okay, it, but there has to be a price tag. Just like there's a price tag of them patrolling the streets. Yeah, but when you bring uh, multiple agencies together, that's going to cost money. Not any more so than anything else. Well, is that right? Ernie, you have to have a plan in place. You have to sit down and talk with these people. Okay, so I'm asking what we, it you come? don't you you can't say in advance there'll be any extra cost. There may be none. There may be more. Okay, so when would you know? After we've had the discussions with them. Okay, and then and you're going to provide a, a list. Forward. You're going to provide. That's what I'm asking. We, I'm yeah, well, we, you know, we can't see in, we can't see into the future. Yeah. I'm not asking them the prices now. I just asked them if he's going to 
if there's any increased it, cost, I'm sure we, it'll have to go. If we have to buy council. something in order to do to do this function, then there'll be some cost, and it'll be before council. And one last question: Where's the ball at with the school district honoring some of these homes so you could get it cleared and, and taken down the? Uh, I think the solicitor will address that, but I think that that's that's coming along quite well. Okay, that's it. Which, uh, let me make a, a formal announcement here, and I've been talking about this all along, but celebrate Manesson this Saturday at the boat launch, starting at 4 o'clock, well, the kids can start at 8 o'clock, there'll be uh, fishing competitions, there'll be uh, little things for the kids to do, but at 4 o'clock we'll be set up with uh, all the, the food, food, and we have our fire department that'll be there, there'll be a steel plate that'll be there. Um, we'll have uh, possibly some pizzas there as well. But the bottom line is at 9.30 we will have a fireworks show and it'll be a big fireworks show. We've got some uh, very big donors that have uh, donated some money for this. It'll go well. It's going to be one of the biggest shows in uh, on Mount Mon Valley this year. So anyway, if you get a chance, the weather should be perfect on Saturday. Come enjoy things. We'll uh, get a good chance to, to meet everybody, to see everybody, celebrate the, the, the day. And that's what it's all about. Um, we don't have any old business to discuss, but I'd like to ask our city solicitor to address some of the things that he's been working on. Uh, Councilman Nestor just brought up a good point. Uh, there are no minutes. Right, there, I is, that. there is a motion on there. I guess the appropriate thing would be to table that till the minutes are complete. Ah. Okay. Okay. Could, could I have a motion to table the minutes? Mayor, a motion to table the minutes of our previous council session on July 14, 2022. Could I have a second? Second. Call a roll, please. Councilman Wojciechowski? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman McGregor? Aye. Mayor Mosier? Aye. Sorry. Well, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, on tonight's agenda, you'll see there's an update for the civil service rules. Uh, the chief of police sent that over. Uh, I took a look at it just to make sure it was consistent with um, the collective bargaining agreement. It is. Um, it's just shortening the time frame for promotions for uh, lieutenants and sergeants. That's correct, Chief, right? Okay. Um, so that's ready for council's vote. It already went through the Civil Service Commission, and that is their recommendation. Um, the second item, the bid specifications for the Phase 3 USDA project are nearing completion. Um, I worked with the engineers today. The last item in there are just the insurance requirements for the contractors that will be bidding. Um, they have reached out to an engineer from the USDA uh, just to get some final clarifications. Um, those will be submitted, the whole packet will be submitted to the USDA um, probably within the next week or so. And their target right now is to place that out to bid uh, starting in October. Um, and finally, the tax forgiveness program. Um, the ordinance is in the process of being drafted. It'll be ready for the August meeting. Um, the school board has appointed members to the commission that will be formed by the ordinance, and it'll be off and running. Um, for the properties that have entered the plan, that have agreements, the mayor, as he stated a few meetings ago, uh, he sent out a survey to make sure they were still interested in participating, and there is a plan in place to address those so nobody's going to be losing a home that they expended um, some funds on to improve. The whole goal was to get them back on the tax rolls, uh, and, and make those homes livable and it looks like numerous people a good amount of people have have done that um, so there is a plan in place to protect them as well that's all I have for this evening unless there's questions thank you uh, our city treasurer is absent this evening so uh, I guess we'll move on to our city controller and wait for his report on the uh, next meeting I gave my report last okay very good Mm -hmm. Okay. New business. This is uh, something that's been three years in coming. For three years, we've not seen a public presentation of uh, of the audit. 
and I am quite pleased that uh, we have Cypher and Cypher here who will uh, present the audit for the year 2021. I needed it. That, that works like that. When you hold it up like that, it works. Is it working? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, when we were hearing a it's Bluetooth ones, <laughs> sound comes from a lot of places. So um, that I can't hear myself is not a really good thing. Um, folks, what we have given you here tonight is a copy of the audit report. That's the bound book that you have in front of you. A copy of a management letter. And then the third thing is the presentation, which for the public benefit, we have shown on a uh, beautiful white sheet. <laughs> and um, with the start, I'm Steve Cipher from Cipher and Cipher. My dad founded the firm a number of years ago. I have with me tonight uh, Mrs. Cheryl Rockovich. She and the staff and I did the audit work this year. But why we're here uh, is a function of the third class city code. Uh, it tells you that you will have an audit of your financial statement. And if we start with page two of the presentation, um, you can see that the audit covered this year, December 31st, uh, 2021. The critical thing to keep in mind is that Everything in the report itself is the responsibility of city management. Our responsibility is to counsel. We work for you, indirectly the public. We're obliged to use U.S. Uh, auditing standards. And the purpose of an audit is to give you an opinion from us whether these financial statements represent where you were at the end of the year and how you got there. The fourth pull it down, you can see the auditor's opinion is unmodified. That's exactly what you would expect to see. You can have a place that billions rich, dirt poor, and both can still have an unmodified opinion. These statements represent where the city of Manhattan was at the end of the year and how it got there. The second thing that uh, I would point out on this page uh, we have issued a special letter to communication to uh, the city of what we consider to be material weaknesses um, in your financial compliance system. Hold the mic up a little higher. I'm sorry. Um, so we go to page three. Uh, we're going to cover these very briefly. Uh, the number. 2021-001 and 2021-002. Uh, finding one details the city administration's failure to implement and have in place uh, proper internal control and to adhere to the third class city code in compliance, uh, resulting in a compliant failure with the code. Uh, in our view, city administration acted singularly and at times cohesively to borrow fund, execute transfers without approval of council. Um, code tells you you're not allowed to do that. Second finding um, details the $209,000 of unapproved borrowing in 2021 from the line usage fund by the general fund, again, without the approval of council. When we go to page four, the city's financial statements are divided into three parts. The first that we're going to talk about are the major funds. There are three of those. General fund, line usage, capital projects, and you have a number of other smaller funds. The focus is on the short term, what happened in 21, 
with the general fund and its budget, and what happened with those other funds. And turning to page uh, five, last year the general fund brought in some $4.3 million. Total expenses were more than that, 4.7. The fund balance last year went down 418,000. The general fund fund balance uh, is presently a minus 875,000 uh, unassigned amounts of that 889,000 in the red. Line usage, a million 47,000 of revenue. That fund spent 750,000. That fund balance went up 297,000. It was that profit that was improperly lent to the general fund. Presently, that fund balance is 531,000. Capital project fund, very small amount of activity, $1,400 of revenue. That fund balance is some 60,000 at the end of the year. All the other non-major funds, uh, revenues of a million six, expenditures of a million seven, those fund balances went down 134,000. They presently stand in at $88,000. Um, when we go to the next page, um, this is the history lesson. Uh, it would be like a ride at Kennywood, only you'd be upside down the whole time. <laughs> Might not be a fun feeling. And counsel, this shouldn't be a fun feeling for you. Um, this year, 21, which you see on the far right, is the worst financial condition the city has been in at least since 2014. Maybe a time in the past that it was worth, but uh, close to a million dollars of negative fund balance is not a good thing. Why do we talk about fund balance all the time? That's the next page. It's the working capital. Your city treasurer, your accounts payable clerk, will tell you, hey, there was no money in January and February. You well know that because you had a borrowing in January that was approved. Without a fund balance, you don't have working capital. So worse, if something goes wrong, this city has no place to go for contingency. There's no rainy day fund. Lastly, it Probably the saddest thing, these folks put you here for one reason, to make the city of Manesson better tomorrow than it is today. You started with a minus number, folks. Uh, it's going to be a hard thing to make Manesson better tomorrow than it is today, especially when you don't have any money. Uh, we'll go to page eight. Where are we trying to get to with the general fund? There are rules of thumb, but the funny thing is there's only seven people in the city of Manhattan that know how much fund balance the city needs. And you guys get to raise your own taxes. I've never, ever had that privilege. I don't think I want it either. But rule of thumb, we're in the middle of the 22 budget. 5% of that number is a number close to uh, 350,000. 10% 400,000, 600,000, I'm sorry. And then 15% is a number just a bit over 800,000. Those are the numbers that you need in your fund balance, in the general fund alone, to assure proper functioning of the city. Right now, you can see on the far left there, the fun, that fund balance is a minus 869,000. We have a long, long way to go here. When we move to the next page, budgetary performance, arguably your most important financial decision of the year, is passing a budget. That's your plan. What are you going to do? Well, for 21, the budget that we passed, we brought in about 362000 less than we thought we would. 
the larger variance was noted in real estate taxes and intergovernmental revenue. Grants did not come in the way they were expected to. The second thing is real estate tax, we have a certain amount of the millage dedicated for debt service. That has no business being budgeted for in the general fund. There is a separate debt service fund where that is properly reported. We've done that in this report. It's not been done in the past. Expenditure side, we spent 93000 more than we thought we would, which really isn't bad if you think about it. $4 million, $4.7 million of expenses hit it within 93000 The largest over-budget variances last year, general government, which is the mayor's office, the city clerk's office, the treasurer, the solicitor, the auditor running the building, that was over. Public safety was over, and health and sanitation was over. The under budget variance, uh, the big number was in highway, community development, and again, debt service because it doesn't belong in the general fund because we have a special millage for that. Now, when we go to page 11, the interesting thing here is the overall city revenue, and this is every fund, general line usage debt service, so on and so forth. Group revenues are almost even every year. They've crept up slightly over the past several years and uh, finished this year at <coughs> over $7 million. When you look at the expenditure number, similar picture. We spent more this year than we have in any of the other years shown on the graph. But the critical thing is, we're always spending more than we bring in. So it's never a good moment, unfortunately. Uh, page 13, we're not going to spend a lot of time on these graphs. The city revenue overall are shown here for every year from, so what did I say, 2014? 15. 15 through 2021. The major revenues, real estate, local enabling taxes, uh, interest rents and so forth, governmental <coughs> revenue. And then on the second page, page 14, are the other uh, smaller amounts of revenue and the types of variances that they have. 15 and 16 are the same numbers for expenditures. And if we go to page 15, what you can see here, I think we want 15, right? General government, what you can see, the very pale blue in the first set of bars, significant increase in what we call the overhead of government. Public safety, significant increases over the last three years. The uh, health and sanitation, significant increase. Highways and streets, right about even. And then last year for the uh, employee benefits and so forth, they were significantly higher than they were a year ago. When you go to page 17, what we've broken out here are the various components the various components of benefits the MMO for the police and non-uniform and fire are the first three sets of bars you can see that the police MMO is all over the place uh, the MMO for 2021 for police, about 325,000. For non uniform about 40,000. For fire, about 15,000. Move over to the fourth set of bars hospitalization, dental, and prescription coverage. It's actually less expensive this year than it has been, uh, it's gone down. And similarly so with the health care debit card, that usage went down this year as well. Page 18, 
the last thing that we're going to talk about. The management letter is our opportunity to give you some concluding comment. Fund balance, every one of us runs a household. Do you want a new couch? Do you want to go to the food land tonight? Better have some money. We're buying things bigger than a couch and some food at the food land. We're running a city. Um, dire shape. Investments in cash management. You're the custodians of pension money. You need to keep that in the back of your head and in the front of you at all times. Um, the market's been all over the place, at least in the last six months. You need to be aware of what's going on with your pension money. Internal control. Aside from the failure to approve borrowing, the segregation of duties concerns us. So it's, it's an inherent problem with almost any small organization. You cannot hire enough people to make sure nobody's doing anything incompatible. But that's where you come in as counsel. You maintain that power of the post. Know what you're spending. Sign those checks. Very important. When we go to bookkeeping matters, uh, interfund balances, um, those need to be approved. Uh, they need to be repaid. Transfers need to be approved, need to be repaid. Payroll liabilities in the past have not been properly reconciled. One of the things that we did do as part of this year's audit is tie those numbers down. Going forward, that needs to be done. But was a prior period adjustment uh, the net of it was probably around uh, $7,000 for the you know, um, mistakes in the prior year's audit. Uh, police and fire minimum municipal obligation, we're required to pay that money by the end of the year. If you don't pay it, you pay interest on it. We can't afford the interest. So you need to make those payments on time. Um, lastly, folks, the thing you want to keep in mind about auditors is we come in after the war is over and they end up the wounded. So what generally an auditor has to say is not always pleasant. There's a lot of spirit in Manesson. Uh, I kind of like it here. But you're the custodians of that. We have seen governments in worse shape than this financially. You can come out of it, but it's going to require some extremely difficult choices. But that's what the voters have put you there for. Uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer those for you. But thank you all very much. We much appreciate being the auditors of the uh, city of Manhattan. Council. Thank you for the time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, on, on the audit itself, on Hmm. I'm not sure what page it is. You break down this uh, line usage fund, and basically what it says is there was a balance brought forward from 1231 of 2020 to the tune of $239,938.08. That's correct. That's on page five, man. Okay. So, so the, the point being is, I think you've even gone so far as to say that came even before 2015. Is that correct? That's the last one that we have that, that we are able to see. If you could um, find any older audit reports, we could probably go back and track that down. Okay. And I guess that's where, where I'm going with this whole thing is, um, Face value is we have to pay back $448,938.08 on a, on a budget that we're already having trouble with, if we're already having issues, and to be hit with a half million dollars new new debt that we didn't know we had is is almost the nail in the coffin that we just did not need. But it, a lot of it comes from the $209,000 from last year. We understand that that was just done wrong. It should never happened. Um, it inflated their their balance sheet inappropriately. Uh, it did a lot. It had lots of connotations to it. Um, we're going to have to pay that money back for sure. That two hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars that goes back to twenty fifteen and before, though, I want to talk about that for a second. Um, 
first off, as everybody is well aware, that was when Debbie Grass came into town, early intervention back then. Lou Maracas was the, the mayor. Ron Charvelli was the CFO. Um, they were struggling to meet ends meet. And I did find some reference in the books, and I did talk to, to uh, the controller of the time, Vlasic, that they did take money out of the line usage and move it to the general fund in accordance with what they believed was correct insofar as they were doing work on the storm drains at the time. And they were expensing out the truck and the labor at the time that was used for that. Where I'm going with this is $239,000 on top of the $209,000 from last year is just, it, it, breaks, it breaks our back. We, I would like to, and we will t talk about this, and maybe the next meeting we will make a motion, I hope, to hire you back to identify where this $239,000 was spent, was it spent inappropriately or not, and identify that. If, if at all possible, and you can prove that that was spent appropriately on things that line usage should be spent on, I would think that we can get rid of that number. Mayor, that uh, uh, I wouldn't want you to do otherwise uh, because I think you need to know and it would do world to improve the general fund condition if we could show that back in those days uh, somebody didn't properly account for it, didn't do anything illegal of course, but they didn't properly account for it and um, we can help with that. Okay. We can help with that. Well, ho hold on a second, Ernie. I'm, you can have questions at the end. Um, excuse me? Well, we'll have questions in a minute. Does anybody else have any questions or comments or concerns about what they've seen of the audit thus far? I mean, granted, it's a lot to take in and you haven't had a chance to read it all, but. Nothing good. I think it's quite clear that last year was, was bad. The year before was very bad. The year before that was bad. Um, it's been a long time since we've had anything even close to being a, a reserve in cash. In fact, nothing in all these numbers here. Uh, the point I'm making really is that as tight as we are with the budget, as tight as we are with the money, I think we're going to have to get tighter if we're going to survive this. The only option is to talk to the state and Act 47. That's just not where I want to go. That's just not it. Uh, I think we got a lot of improvement that we can make. Okay, one question for you. What we see starting from, let's say, December 2019, December 2020, December 2021, where's it going? Is it going deeper in debt? They're 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 just a third party. They're here to help, so they can't make they can't make any decisions. Like that's why they're an auditor. They can't. You just. He. Earning. Calm down. Calm. Yeah, they're trying to stay out of it and be true neutral. That's what their job is to be. That's why you should. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. I've got it. In fact, um, 
unless nobody has objection, I'd like to post the audit online after Thank the uh, so much. after the meeting. No, I mean, it's on the agenda, so if council wants to accept the audit tonight or you can do it at the next meeting, that's up to you with your discretion here. I'd like to go over, if you wouldn't mind, Ron, to go through it a little bit. And you're welcome to call our office uh, or come visit us if you have any questions. Any questions, we can give you all. Or, thank you. Um, anybody want to make a motion? Um, yeah. Yeah. Mayor, a motion to accept the audit uh, for the physical year of 2021 from Cypher and Cypher. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Do we want to talk about it and discuss it anymore? I'm sure we'll be discussing it further. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Orchikowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier. Yes. <coughs> At this time, I would like to Thank invite. You. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to. Oh, oh, yeah. Turn the lights on. Thank you very much, too, Steve. <laughs> Go to sleep. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Karen to uh, give us a little presentation on the Mon Valley Emergency Medical Services, the EMS, that's been a longtime resident of Manesson. Come on up to the podium and use the, the mic. You use the mic, please. Yeah, just flip it up. And I don't know why they turned it off. Yep. Okay. So I didn't really prepare a lot. Um, I know there's been a lot of stuff in the media, um, you know, with another service coming in. Um, there's been a lot of rumors flying and that we're still down there. We're still answering calls. Um, we're still taking care of Manesson. Um, you know, 138 calls this month, just this month in Manesson. Um, are we short staffed? Yes. I'm not going to deny that. We're just like everybody else. Um, do we have plans in place um, so that if we're out on a call or, you know, we're shorthanded, we have backups? We have backups, no different than the police department, the fire department. We have to call in for backups. Um, our main concern are the citizens and residents of this town that if they call and need an ambulance, make sure that somebody gets there to tend to their needs. Um, we're working every day to get people to come on board. Um, nobody wants to do this anymore. Um, it's expensive to go to school and become EMTs, paramedics, um, EMTAs. Now they have an EMTA program. We do have, we have all three of them. And, you know, it's just nobody wants to work. And if they do work, they don't really want to come to work. You hire them, you schedule them, and then they call off. So you have to scramble to get somebody to cover. So, you know, I mean, it's... it's it's a tough battle. Um, but yes, we are still there. Um, and some of the things that happened in our neighboring communities, that was not anything to do with the residents. I get calls every day from the residents and of those other communities. Why did you leave us? It wasn't us. It was, you know, people coming in telling you, hey, I can do this better. I promise you this. And 
certain people believe, you know, it's like new people come on, new people, you know, come on, and they're like, yeah, okay, we think this will be better. It's something I can't control, but I want the citizens to know that we never deserted them, we didn't leave them, you know, and as a matter of fact, we're still there for them, um, just like the residents here in Manessa. So, and if anybody has questions, I'm there every day. I'm there a lot. <laughs> um, call me. I'll gladly t sit down and talk with you, just like the residents, you know. And I have had them call because you do see that. And it's like, well, you believe what the media says. Can't always believe what's in the paper. Can't always believe what's on TV. Um, and like I said, my doors, you know, is open. I'm there Monday through Friday. Um, and if I'm not there, everybody knows how to get a hold of me. And I will gladly return a phone call. But if you have questions, just ask me. But yes, we are still there. And like I said, we were working every day. Um, I've had a lot of my volunteers step up and help me so that, you know, when, on the days that we are short, hey, I'll lend you a hand. Even if it's for a couple hours, you know, I will lend a hand. That's why I was a little bit late because I was we had a call down the street and I was making sure that I didn't need to go, you know, back them up. So, um, you know, if you, like I said, if you have any questions, but I want you all to know that we are still here um, with Manessa. We started in Manessa in 1969, and our goal and our plan is to continue to be here for Manessa. Um, okay. You might not always see a truck out there, but there's a truck in the area for you. So any questions? Any one of the things that uh, it occurs to me, first off, I went to uh, Greensburg to the 911 center and would like to, uh, I don't know that they give tours there to just anybody, but I was quite impressed with the way that they run their operation there. One of the things that the uh, director of the, uh, the uh, organization told me was that 911 center responds however the city wants them to respond. In other words, if you have a fire call, there is a list of people that are called when you have a fire call. Right now, I think both Fire Company 1 and Fire Company 2, Denor and Charroway respond to every fire call. Is that right, Delmar? What, how is it currently arranged? Vanessa 1, Vanessa 2, Carol Thompson. Okay, so there's, so there's four, four four departments will respond to any fire. And that's just the way that 911 was told to operate. In the case of, uh, of uh, the police department, they, they, they notify, they dispatch the police officers according to a plan that was put together for the police. And the same is true for the, not the EMS service that we have. Um, when you see these company, these cities like Denora and Charleroi that have decided to go with a different EMS operation, all they really do is they call, they, they make arrangements with the 911 center to change who's the primary person being called. Um, the point being is, I think that we can work up some procedures that you're the first one that's called, but if you can't respond quickly, that they will then call somebody else. The, 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 the Whichever um, county that it's in, because we cover Westmoreland and Washington. Right. I think that I will even go so far as to get 911 involved with that cycle as well. But, so, well, so. they do have, like, fire departments have what they call run cards. We have what we call a beat list. So if they call us, then it's, okay, can you go to the beat list? And they know... Um, like who is the next one in charge. And what it is, it's it, how we've always set it up was the closest. So if this service over here can get here close, you know, quicker, then we would take that. And then if they're not available, then there's another one backed up behind them and another one behind them so that right. there is coverage. But yes, right. that. And, and that's really what it boils down to is I want to make sure that we have EMS service in a reasonable time in the city of Manesson. It's, it's, uh, it's our well-being that's at stake there. 
The other, the other comment that I really want to make, and please bear with me with this. I've been running a business for a long time, and I very much believe that you treat your employees well because your employees treat your customers well. If you don't treat your employees well, they're not going to treat your customers well. And I think you have a problem there. You need to figure out a way to, to encourage your employees, to reward your employees, to promote your employees, to get them to want to be a part of the operation. And if you got good employees, you will have good service to the, the customers. And I, I don't know how you run your business, but please think that carefully through, and hopefully you'll come up with some ideas. But I think that's important if the Mon Valley EMS is going to thrive again like it once did. So that's all I had. Does anybody else have any comments they want to make? I just like to ask a couple of questions. How many full-time employees do you have at this time? What's the breakdown on them? How many do you have EMTs, paramedics? How's, how, what's your breakdown? Um, I have seven part-time paramedics. I believe it's seven part-time paramedics. Two, three. Oh, he just went part-time, so. Two full-time EMTs. Um, I have six part-time EMTAs, which is an advanced EMT, so they're ALS. Um, there's a total of 28, so I'm missing somebody. When you uh, put a schedule together, mm -hmm. do you have like Obviously, manpower seems to be, or people power seems to be an issue. Mm -hmm. Do you schedule when you don't have any of the shifts filled? Is, does that occur when you fill out a schedule? Yeah, when I fill out a schedule, are there open shifts on it? Yes, and my part-time people will pick them up. And that's they have been picking up no, all the shifts. All of the shifts. I mean, there's sometimes there's one person on there, but it's no different than any of the other services around here. You know, I've been talking to a couple different ones, and you know, we we they've been like, hey, I have you know one person working picking up the shift, and that. But do I have open shifts where there may be one person on it? Yes. Do I have an open shift where, uh, you know, I need a volunteer to fill it in? Yes. Has it ever happened that you've had open shifts and you haven't filled them? Yes. And what's but your during the day? What's your procedure when that happens? Then that's where 911 needs to take place. That's then I, I call for a backup service. I mean, you notify 911 yes. that you have, or I, I ask them to put on my backup service. You know, can you take this call during the day? There's always myself and uh, my other EMT that is there during the day. And if we need to pick up that, you know, go on that call, then we'll go on that call and then call for you know the backup service. Or if I have one person. Um, it just occurred the other day. We had called. They have a service. It's 940 Medic, which that is what they were actually put in place for, was to back up the services in the area that needed, you know, assistance for their staffing. And they will meet my crew on scene, or whether it be, you know, they use Ross Draver, or whether they use um, the one that's TCA. Um, I couldn't think of their name. And ambulance and chair, it you know they'll they'll call for a 940 medic and they'll back up. The other day, the 940 medic was on their way. They diverted to another call, so I went to the scene and I made I finished out the crew. I drove the person to the hospital. 
but yeah, so I mean, if it's not that we just, oh, okay, we're just shutting the door because we don't have anybody there today. We, we will try to get somebody to come in, but if a call comes in, we will use a backup service to take that call, just like everybody else does. And if anybody tells you that that doesn't happen, they're not telling you the truth. And I know that you laugh. But no, I'm I not know. laughing. I, I'm sympathizing with you because I'm a vo volunteer fireman. Exactly. So and you I, know, I'm sympathizing so you have with to call you. The other so services I'm, not, I'm not laughing. I don't think it's funny. I'm just, I know and where you're I coming from. I know that there are people that are sending letters out and they are, you know, talking outside of the thing and they're taking our schedule and they're sending it out because people have come to me and said, oh, look. You need help today. How did you know? Because you weren't in my, my office and my schedule was up in my dispatch center, which my dispatch center is is always staffed. You think money's the problem? Money's always the problem. Um, you know, you could, and everybody's like, well, if you pay them more. I know services that are paying, offering $32 an hour for paramedics with a $5,000 sign on bonus and they still can't get anybody. But you can only pay what you can afford to pay. I mean, I just sat here and watched your, your audit that, so you know, I mean, money doesn't come in. You can't very well, you can't pay out more than what comes in. Okay, I, I, The only I, money that we get is from insurance companies. Thankfully, the subscriptions that you're, the citizens of Manesson give us and donations. I, I understand about calling in, uh, Companies to fill fill in for you. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Um, I'm not even sure how I want to put this. Um, you said you had how many calls this past month? Um, I believe it was 138. 138 calls. Mm -hmm. How many calls did you scratch on um, when you couldn't make out it? Out of that, um, 20. 20 scratches. Yeah, but that might. It, the reason it might have been was because we were on another call. Yeah, yeah, I'm that, aware of that. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't break it down. Seven of those were fire calls. Three of them were standbys. Um, seven of them were no patient contact, whether, so it was their medical alarm went off. They called us, we went over, and the person said, I'm fine. We have a resident that we're there at least, I don't know, sometimes three times a, a day. Because Frequent medical, flyer. And those we do not get, we get no pay for. It. And nine refusals out of that hundred and... 30 it was, um, you go, and I just, I'm not feeling good, can you please eval evaluate me? And I don't want to go to the hospital. I mean, which is fine, that's our job, to go and assess them, and tr we can't force them to go to the hospital, we can't. You know, we can advise them, we call medic command, we have the command doctor talk to them, there's a whole list of questions that they ask, and if they feel that they are capable of making that decision, then we're allowed to refuse. Again, we don't get paid for that. The only time we get paid is when that person gets in the back of our truck and we take it to a hospital. And hopefully they have insurance. You know, and it's, we did get a raise that won't go in effect till January, but Medicare and Medicaid did up um, their raises. So now for Medicaid, Instead of us getting paid $180 for that trip that we just took that person to the hospital, we will now get, I believe they upped it to 300 That was for BLS. But right now we get paid 380 or 180 for a Medicaid person. And, I mean, mo that, there's a lot that have that, you know, just because of, you know, the finances and so forth that they're in. I mean, fortunately, that is an option for them, you know. But, um, yeah, and, the, and all of the ones that we don't transport, we don't get paid for. And it's, you're probably looking at 780 some dollars just for my truck to go out that door. Oh, I'm aware. So, yeah. yeah so, I'm aware. Uh, Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
they're paid by the hour. It depends on what you're in. Um, okay. Um, the the lowest we just we just opted. We used to have two rates. Um, we just opted. I believe medics are twenty one an hour. I want to say 21, 15, and 13. Medics, EMTAs, and EMTs, I believe, are 13. What is the lowest? Um, the lowest, I believe, is 11, and that's our van drivers. 11, and that's our van drivers. Yeah. Exactly. You pay the employees with the deserve. I don't want to be a cop and if I make more than forty bucks an hour, I don't want to be because that's a risky job, same as you are. But they all talk about doing coffee, coffee, how important the job is. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to do the money. But I yeah, I mean I, I like I said, I can't pay what I I would love to be able to pay more than what we can. And we have to constantly do con ed. We have to go to classes. And, you know, there, there are, once you get your certification and you get through the class, which that isn't an easy process, and then every, you know, within, like, your cert, every three years you have to recertify. That's for EMTs. Paramedics every two years, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. You can't, but by the same token, you can only pay what you have to pay, too. That's right. You're exactly right. There's no doubt. I agree with you 100%. The business model has a problem, is what you're saying. Yes, I understand. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Would it be possible to go to a dual response? Is that, we have is some that, areas with a dual response, yes. I mean, is that... There are some of the, the smaller boroughs that have a dual response. I mean, would that be a good option for Manesson? Yes, no, or maybe? I, I, you have no... I'd have to, you know, really like look at all the factors in that. Okay, if... If but, you did but you also, the, you know, there are some, you know, you keep adding to services, you know, but that they already have their communities in that, so then they run thin because they don't have the manpower to, to take on extra, you know. But do we run dual responses? Yeah. And there are some, some boroughs that, you know, that we do have a dual response. Who's your closest... If you were, if we did do something, well, who's the closest service? Um, well, we have Tri Community on one side. It, it all depends on where they have their their station. You know, what part where of they're going to come out of. But you know, Tri Communities down the road. Have I used them? Yes. You know, Ross Draper is up the thing. Have we used them? Yes. And there is actually a part of um, like North Bell Vernon that we have. That's that's a dual response. You well, know? I, I think this is something that we're probably going to have to look into with dual response because this also affects our ISO, affects a lot of things. Yeah, um, I, I know that you're looking at um, what is it, Ross Driver West Newton? They have a substation in Pricedale, and then you have Worst Truck. I'm I, I'm not sure. We'd have to find that. I out. know they've talked to you. I know they have. They haven't talked to me. 
Not they right. haven't talked to me. I, I just, you. I've just but been you, around. Okay, okay. I'm saying, but yes, they they do have a station. Whether they staff it, I do not know. Uh, all I'm asking you for is for information. Yeah. It's okay. like where where would Tri Communities and substation be? Do they have one close by? They have a yes. They have one on Chest Street in Monongahela. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they've just partnered up with. Um, they have. They've been being helped out because they're having a staffing staffing issue, and there were there were weeks that would go by. Tri communities is where I live. I live in Monongahela, and there were weeks when they had nobody. Yeah. We were covering for that, but they have partnered up with uh, Southeast Regional, which is they cover um, foul, or, um, forward. My fire department service here. You think I know that? Um, Forward, Union Township, um, Nottingham, I believe they cover. Elizabeth Township, Elizabeth, they, that's where Southeast Regional covers. But they have been, and they're using because they both are having staffing issues. So they have kind of been like sharing staff, and they've been covering so. And we have called them, um, and like I said, they're maybe five minutes away. But their their station is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Monongahela. Unfortunately, I'm not. Okay, you know where McDonald's is? Yes. Okay, it's the next street up. Okay. And probably Caddy Corner, you know, a block. They're so they'd have to cross street. the river, shoot down 906. Um, mm -hmm. They could just shoot straight up. They don't have to cross the river. They could just shoot up through Denora. I want to interrupt here for yeah. just a second. Rather than just dragging this on, um, maybe you guys can talk about this more offline and okay. and we can uh, continue this discussion. Okay. In the meantime, I'd like to continue with the agenda. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank to come you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, just push down. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Always for more now. That emergency sewage. I don't, I don't need it. Well, okay, so we've got some motions to pay some invoices here. I'm not sure why they're under my thing, but everybody knows I don't make motions, so I will pass that on to somebody else. Want to read it? All right. Uh, motion to pay invoice to Moranac Excavation in the, uh, Incorporated for emergency sewer repair at 8th, 8th and Schoemaker in the city of Manessa in the amount of $5,000. Is there a second? Second. No, I can't Second. do that. Second. Are there any questions? Call the roll, please. That was an emergency. Well, we well, had raw sewage it was coming raw out. Raw sewage on on Schoonmaker is what it was, and it could have collapsed that whole that whole section of road there. But let's let's not. We can have those comments after at the end anyway. Uh, call the roll, please. Councilman Orchakowski. Yes. Councilman Nestor. Aye. Councilman McGregor. Aye. Mayor Mosier. Aye. Motion to pay invoice to WEC Engineering Incorporated Sewer Rehabilitation Project Phase Four, Pinvest, 9th Street, uh, Delaware Avenue, and Shawnee Park, in the amount of five thousand five hundred thirty-two dollars and thirty-four cents. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Councilman Nestor. Aye. Councilman Gregor. Aye. Councilman Orchakowski. Yes. Mayor Mosier. Aye. All right, Mayor. Motion to exonerate taxes owned to the city of Manesson on the following properties. Property number 20-0203-0163, uh, uh, that would be 166 Donner Avenue, Manesson, PA, uh, 15062, in the amount of $412.60. Uh, property number 20-0208-0062, which is uh, 217 Parenti Boulevard, Manesson, PA, 15062, in the amount of $4,410.71. And, and finally, property number 20 uh, which is 422 Second Street, Manesson, Pennsylvania, 15062, in the amount of $12,142.36. Is 
Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Let me explain real quick. All three of these properties they have completed, they are fully, fully uh, rehabilitated. They are, they met all the requirements of the, uh, the tax exoneration uh, agreement that was done last year. And it's only right that we, we follow through and exonerate the taxes. So. <coughs> Call roll, please. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Ruchikowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Yes. Motion to ratify changes in the civil service rules of the city of Manesson to assist in developing a more comprehensive and quantif quantifiable chain of command within the departments. Uh, these proposed changes have been approved by the civil service board and the changes require approval of council. The changes would amend section 61A1 relative to the years of service required for the applica application for the position of police sergeant from five years as a full-time officer to three years as a full-time officer to apply for that position. It would also amend section 61A2 and require that an, any applicant for the position of police lieutenant have at least five years of consecutive experiences as a full-time police sergeant within the city of Manesson Police Department. In addition, it would also permit Chief Uhas to administrate uh, a, a promotional test in the amount in around the month of October 2022 to implement these changes. The specific language of proposed changes are within the amendment A of your council agenda packet. Is there a second? I'll second. We'll call the roll. Any questions? That pretty described, very well described it. <laughs> call the roll. <laughs> Councilman Orchikowski? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman McGregor? Aye. Mayor Fudge? Aye. All right, sorry about that. Motion to proceed with the, <laughs> motion to proceed with the military mutual uh, mural, sorry, mural at the Anthony E. Madison Senior Veterans Park by the uh, by and through a contractual agreement with artist David Scott Brozovich. Pro uh, project number Mon dash zero two twenty seven twenty two. The project will be funded by allocations from approved funding from the American Restoration Plan funds, the amount of five thousand dollars. All allocations will enable funding allocation of to, uh, 2500 at the start of the project and a final funding allocation of 2500 at the completion of the project. Is there a second? Second. Sorry. Any questions? Um, not that I'm against it, but have we discussed this previously? This is a, uh, yes, this was the, uh, the, uh, all the part of the enhancements to Nye Street Park. The Anthony Madison Park. We uh, uh, we gave uh, Lois the responsibility for going out for bids and quotes. She did that. There's she she acquired several quotes on this. This was the low bidder. Oh, okay. I just I don't remember discussing it. I do know that we had authorized her to do that. I think, I, if I'm correct, I think in, in past two with the other murals in Manesson, they've been actually kind of the same payments with the same strategy of 2,500 and then another 2,500 after completion. Well, some of those I've murals, that I don't think they were ever properly voted on. Right. Just, just saying. Yeah. But so this is, well, at least we're doing the right thing here. Oh, absolutely. I just. The uh, there was a picture of it, but I don't think. Oh, so. there is a picture. Of it. Actually, it's going to look very okay. nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a black and white picture, but yeah. Yeah. Well, just it, I, I kind of <laughs> like the flags. I think it would be perfect. It'd yeah, I was just curious because. Um, okay, we'll call the roll then. But Council Gregor, Council Gregor, you are correct. None of the murals that were done previously were ever approved or brought to Council's attention. My understanding at the time was they were supposed to be donations. Apparently they weren't. Well, we paid for it this year. I'm aware. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Yes. 
Discussion of purchasing system alternatives for the City of Manesson and to provide the Council with the citizens of the City of Manesson with pricing capabilities and all relevant information on how these products may benefit the efficiency of the internal financial workings and the day to day procedures at City Hall. I think it's my turn. So, what this is, is uh, Tamika, which is our accounts uh, payable clerk, and I took a uh, took a little bit of time, we contacted a number of different vendors of software that is uh, cloud-based for purposes of, of handling our purchasing requirements. This will allow somebody to, to use in their phone to be, say, okay, I need to buy such and such. They can get their quotes, they can put that in, they can take a picture of it, they can do whatever they do, but it's recorded as far as who it is and what it is they're buying. They hit the submit request and then it would go to Tony, who can then look at it and say, oh, yeah, there's the, the quotes that we've got. Uh, I like it. I say, okay, I want to do it. And then it sends it to Tamika, and Tamika would get, uh, be able to issue a purchase order and we're off to their tracks. The only reason why this is any different than what we're doing right now is it keeps track of everything. And that's important, too, because it allows us to take things like, what's it cost, what, how many times have we replaced the front wheel bearing on that particular car? Maybe there's something wrong with the shock as well. We're just driving that, you know, driving that, that bearing bad or something. The point being, it keeps track of all this stuff, allows you to generate reports. It'll tell you what the cost is to, to uh, you know, whether it's paper for the, the, the printer or whatever, what, what, what the cost is, how it's going. You can get reports on all this stuff. It's much better record keeping. It'll allow us to track our cost, to, to see where we have problems, to understand that, that this particular piece of equipment has such high maintenance cost, it's time to look at replacement. It will allow us to do lots of things. So that's, that was the goal of it. Uh, we've gone through, there's, in this packet I do believe is, is some information about the three different systems that we looked at. Um, two of the systems are very comparably priced. The third one was substantially higher priced, but yet they all three did almost exactly the same thing. They all have the same reporting capability. They all have uh, very much, very similar to each other. Um, they all provided training, albeit at different cost. Um, what it really boils down to is it will cost the city in the neighborhood of about $15 per user per month or paid over a course of a year, roughly about $2,000 for uh, 10 users of the system. So, um, I would like to, uh, for everybody in council to review these quotes and maybe the next time we'll have a motion to, to, to take the low cost vendor because I think they're all the same and uh, proceed to, to purchase it. That's all that was. The other thing is a discussion on the recent meetings with the city of Manesson Police, the school district and other relevant first responders. And that really has to do with uh, All this come back with Uvalde. We're not Uvalde. We, uh, it's not going to be that. That's not, not at all what we have. We have uh, uh, officers in the elementary center and at the uh, mid-high high school that if there was something that took place, we already have an officer in the school already, so they would, they would uh, be the first contact. But what it really boils down to is the plan that the city has is old very old, like 2006 old. It's time to be updated. Things have changed. Not only that, but once we have a plan, it needs to be practiced in the school. And they need to have drills, regular drills. And I've been working with the school and Mark Ballor and so forth, and they are, they are, they are also working with their IU to, in a, in a similar fashion to come up with a plan. If the unthinkable really does happen, any way you look at it, our police chief is going to be the man that people are going to be looking at. He's going to be the man in charge. He's the man that, that's going to have to answer for it. He's the one that's going to be taking the lead on, on what takes place and what the response is going to be. And that's what, this, uh, what we've been talking about. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Ordenchowski to talk about his things. 
Make a motion to pay the following invoices from the general fund in the amount of $64,406.53. All invoices are attached to this agenda as attachment A. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Uh, yes. Make a motion to pay the following invoices from a recreational account in the amount of $351.89. All invoices are attached to this agenda as attachment B. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Aye. Make a motion to pay the following invoices from the Parks Fund in the amount of $896. All invoices are attached to this agenda as attachment C. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Yes. Motion to pay the following invoices from Liquid Fuels Fund in the amount of $9,966.84. All invoices are attached to this agenda as attachment D. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Aye. Make a motion to pay the following invoices from Line Usage Fund in the amount of $13,556.80. All invoices are attached to the agenda as attachment E. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Mayor Mosier? Aye. And make a motion to transfer $66,616.10 from the general fund to the payroll account fund for payroll. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Orchakowski? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Mayor Mosier? Aye. And our, failing, our following balances. Our debt surface currently has $520,069.21. Grant fund has $52,890.18. The health care fund has $5,279.17. The American Rescue has $44,216.76. Fire escrow has $18,410.99. Line usage fee has $535,130.96. Liquid fuels has $3,977.08. Recreation board has $1,743.27. Parks has $82,597.29. And our general fund has $957,739.28. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Um, we'll uh, ask Lois for her report on the next uh, meeting. Uh, John. Thank you, Mayor. City Council, members of Manesson, uh, citizens of Manesson, and uh, administrative staff. Uh, here's the following report ending in uh, June 2022. This goes as the following. Manesson Fire Chief Report, Station 81. Automatic Fire Alarm, 7. Assisted Police, 1. Structure Fire, 3. Wires Down, 1. Trees Down, 2. Natural Gas Leak, 1. Vehicle Accident, 1. EMS Assistant, 1. Landing Zone, 2. Carbon Monoxide, 1. Structure Fire, Carroll Township, 1. Structure, Carol, uh, structure Fire, Shalori, 1. Structure Fire, Denora, 1. Total calls, 22. Total responding, 282. And average responding per call, 12.26. Uh, 12 the total man hours is 420. Here are the following reports for the Mon Valley Emergency Medical Service. Emergency calls, 136. Standby, uh, standbys, 10. Total incidents, 146. Following report for uh, code, uh, ending in June 2022. Habitation permits, 21. Correction letters, 18. Animal complaints, 4. Miscellaneous complaints, 10. Citations, 4. Inspections, health, 1. Building permits, 1. Uh, office meetings with residents, 8. Zoning permits, 1. Hearings, 2. 
of uh, complete the fire report in our last uh, previous meeting. Um, I currently don't have anything else to report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, John. The floor. Uh, Don, your Parks and Public Property. Parks Department report for June 2022. Cut City Parks and Ball Fields. Fixed a broken sink at the boat launch. Fixed a broken picnic tables at 9th Street Park and City Park Pavilions. Got park pavilions ready for events. Help the street department as needed. And we're still working on the batting cages up at the uh, Shawnee Park. That completes my report. Thank you. Before I open it for uh, public comment, I just want to make one more uh, little statement here. And it really has to do with the uh, blighted property uh, that we have and the plans to move forward. The uh, Westmoreland County Redevelopment Authority slash Land Bank uh, has had people in town going from house to house uh, surveying those properties that were on their list of from, from last year. The last year list was actually an incomplete list, so they're actually skipping over quite a few homes. As such, um, I've asked them to increase their list and to work with the local pastors, and I want to get together with all the pastors because realistically, they know their neighborhoods better than anybody else. They know their they they know which houses have people living in them and which ones don't they know which ones are are the problems but uh, as such we we will also uh, start getting those on the list now just as i'm not comfortable with them taking complete rain and demoing the properties that, that they come to um, they too are not comfortable with us doing the same thing the reason being is they're the ones with the money they're going to want to put their hand their eyes physically on any house that we or any building any structure that we want to have demolished so just because we put it on a list and and clear it doesn't mean that they're going to demolish it until they also agree and i want them to do the same thing for us that they don't demolish anything without us looking at it and putting our eyes on it and making sure it's one that the city agrees is needs to be demolished um, it's only with this double check system that we can really assure that we're doing things properly and I want to you know just uh, make sure that everybody's aware of what we're doing and going forward with that with that I'm going to open the floor to public comment mayor I'd like to make a comment in regards to the purchasing system okay okay um, I currently realize that we do have a purchase order system in effect that mm -hmm. seems to be working okay. Mm -hmm. I agree that we could go to automated. However, in light of our financial situation, I'm against purchasing a system that would take money that we could probably use to fix a truck or whatever it is. The only thing is, is I think that this has a lot to do with preventive maintenance and preventive things that you never know if you're just uh, doing what you did, you're not keeping good records of, you don't have the ability to generate the reports. You don't want to be able to say that this piece of equipment is costing us, over the last five years, we've had a particular problem occur multiple times. And that is something we can talk about more, but yeah. I, I think that economics would show that this would actually save money, not cost more money for one. And for two, there is a 100% money back guarantee. If for whatever reason, that we decide we don't like that they will give us our money back and we say we're done so and that's clearly stated in these proposals as well okay i know i don't need a mic well concern now is the house across the street that has a tree that's like 95% dead and pieces keep falling, branches keep falling and with all this tremendous wind we've had lately, uh, there was a huge branch that thank goodness no one was walking or driving, but it's, uh, I don't know who owns the property, there is someone living there. 
but there's something that will be done with that tree before it does cause some damage or harm. It's, it's right at, right real close to the road on Arlington. So if you maybe have somebody check into it, see what they can do about it. There's still dead branches in there. Do you remember the, uh, the address of the house? Uh, it, it, no. It Is it faces, across the street from yours? It faces Ross Straver, though. Right, what's your address? 91317. It's probably similar. I get mail from one of the two houses. I'll have uh, Marvin go up there and look to see. And we'll look with uh, Marlene too to see if someone owns that property as well. If it's safe. It was yet. up for sale. I, I, I don't know. That's where they had the sewage or water in the basement. Oh, my. <laughs> that wasn't a sewage, by the way. Yeah, and that's something that we all as residents is, is within the city, whether you own property or you live there or not, um, we need to be cognitive of. We need to take care of our property. We need to make sure that, that we're not going to have trees falling off and damaging other people's property. Or, um, yeah, thank you. The problem is, is when your own tree gets you, as happened to me. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, I was, forgot about the land bank thing. Uh, for something we could do for once these properties, you start knowing what properties they are that the county wants to take down. Is there any way we could work something up, Joe, for uh, some sort of liability that the fire department can go do training on some of these houses before they level? Because at all hmm. times, I got these young guys that need roof work, they need truck work, they need to cut holes and things that don't matter. And uh, for something we can do so we can take advantage of this situation as training before they level. Uh, that could be something that be looks that we can look into. You have insurance policies covering injury wise right. and everything right. like that. I know it used to be that once a contractor accepted the it, uh, bid that you could work out a deal with him. I mean, it would, but if it's the county doing it, then yeah, I mean, even. I just don't want to see an opportunity go by here. I understand. Like they tore two buildings down at Park Manor a few years ago that were in perfect condition, mm -hmm. nine and ten. That would have been the ultimate active shooter building, fire department rescue building, but we didn't have that opportunity. Sure. I wasn't chief then, but to do this. And uh, when we see these opportunities, we need to take advantage of them so that we can get better at what we do too. Yeah, I mean, we can take a, uh, care of the liability issue and everything like right. that. Um, probably just will have to get with the county. Of I mean, course, we will go to the site and make sure it's a stable yeah. building. And the, you know, the only issue is the city's not going to own the property, so right. that's going to be the hurdle that we have to get over, and right. potentially maybe we can. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Just for everybody's information, too, if you go to the City of Manesson website and uh, go over to where it has a, there's a section on blighted property, you can bring up a map of Manesson, and that is updated in real time as they do their surveys and they take their pictures. It'll show up on that map in real time. So it's, uh, it's pretty neat. You can see what they're doing as they're doing it. As they walk down the street, you'll see it pop up. Well, it takes money. Now, right? Right. So there is a CDBG public hearing that has taken place once already. There'll be another one soon. I don't think the date's been set yet. Has it been set yet? It has not been set yet. But one of the things I requested of that was. Because we don't need to do spend money on demo and properties out of CDBG but with the county doing it, let's put all that money on the Third Street, fix Third Street. It'll take all the, the money CDBG has to fix that one street, and it's got to go through public hearings and everything else. But that would be my suggestion. Well, as soon as we can get the money. 
Well, it's, this is the long drawn out process. CDBG goes through a, a process we just found out a, about a month ago we had $307,000. That requires at least two public hearings. It requires a council meeting. Um, and everybody's got to agree on what, how this money is going to be spent. In the past, it, it's done things like the uh, McKee is being paved right now as we speak. Uh, that is CDBG money in combination with some, some money we got through codes. But the point being is we don't have any capital money to go paving roads, as you heard from the audit. The only way we get this money is through some particular fund that grants us this. And CDBG is the only one that I'm aware of that allows us to do that. Absolutely. Unfortunately, Walt Haglin and excuse me, we have the money. The three well, there's three hundred seven thousand dollars we will get this year. Absolutely, that's a known factor. All I'm saying is that I don't care what you do. When you go buy a car, right? Until they hand you the key, it's not your car. Right. Well, I'm like, so we don't want to hear about the. Uh, no, we have we 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 we've got we it's our money. We have to. Perenny Boulevard is a different issue altogether. Perenny, as it exists right now, would be about a million bucks. That's not likely we're going to find a million bucks somewhere real handy. But think about this. What if we made Perenny one lane up and one lane down with a grass median in the center? Make it pavement instead of concrete. Now you can probably cut that cost in half or even less. Well, no more grass. Right. Right. And you're talking about wasting money. That is wasting money. Yes. Okay? The other part is, and I see that I'm very visual. When I go up Third Street, there's sidewalks on Third Street on both sides. It doesn't look like it's even a sidewalk. If you could walk through from Third Street to where the bus station is, I'll give you a dollar for every mile. I walk up that way and it's a pain. They, they haven't done that for, for months because they're either doing blacktop or doing the road. Absolutely. And okay. You don't get money by going to Waynesburg. You don't get money by going to Washington. You only get money by going to Westmoreland County and your state legislators. Your senators. They're the important. Not these other fly by night that you're dealing with. Because that's what you're dealing with, fly by night. And if I gotta go to Waynesburg, a third class county to ask for advice on how to run this city, man, I got some problem. I got some major issues. Okay. You got to go to Westmoreland County. That's where the money comes from. A. B. You got to go to your senators. Both of your senators. Then you got to go to your legislators. Your congressmen. That's how you get money into the city. But I don't think you got to do it well, I think I've been to every one of those people, and I, I think that's the reason why we've got the county coming to help us now. That's what you got to do. That's what you guys got to do. Absolutely. I don't disagree with you one bit. Because all I know, I drive Third Street, and I drive on, you know, the uh, Perenny, and I'm sitting on the It's a joke. Yeah. I, I mean, know I'm in Vanessa when I'm blindfolded. My little car just falls into a hole. I need, I need to call Frank to pull me out. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mayor, motion to adjourn tonight's meeting at 8.03. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done.